Hi, welcome back to Kolsky Drones. So today we have the Hubson Zeno. So this is part one, this is my overview. I haven't flown this yet. It's arrived today. Uh, I've had it on back order for quite a long time. So let's just going to show you over it, uh, show you the app, show you the controller, and show you the drone itself. So let's have a look at the drone. So this is how it comes out of the box. It's got folded down, so you back one first, so take out the ones with the long legs on first and then swivel out. There's no fold up and unders like on the Mavic and you get on DJI drones and that's it. So this is the drone itself so on the side you've got USB port which is for updating you've got an SD card slot and you've got an indicator to tell you what the SD card's doing. So to update the camera on this drone you copy files onto the SD card and put it in and that little light will tell you the what state it's in. If it's flashing it'll tell you it's writing and it'll either go solid or it'll go out when it's completed. But that's the only way to update the camera is by the, using the SD card. It has, of course as you probably already well aware of this, a 3 axis 4K gimbal. Now, now it's had the software update done it now has all the modes for the camera so when you get this you're going to have to update the firmware for the camera the firmware for the gimbal and the firmware for the drone itself because everything's out and when you put the new app on it nothing's going to work you're going to have no settings for the camera or anything so you, it's the first thing you really need to do when you get it unless the version you're, you've now got comes after this and they've already done the update the update came out December the 10th so you can see it's got twin props you get a full set of props for this in as spares, you also obviously get a charger, the screwdriver, and you get three of these cables, which is the way the phone attaches to the controller, connects to the controller, very reminiscent of DJI. But what's good about this is you get a micro USB, USB C, and a lightning cable, which I think is fantastic that you get all those in the box. So, build quality. Now, I've seen some videos of this, and I've seen pictures of it before, and I I honestly thought it was really cheap looking. It actually isn't that bad at all. The arms are as smooth as folding on a DJI or anything like that, but the drone itself is very nicely finished off, to be honest. There's a good bit of weight about it. It doesn't feel cheap and tacky and plasticky at all. It feels nice in your hand. Now, I'm not going to compare this to any drone. This is not a comparison video, and I don't intend to do a comparison video because the only thing I think you could compare this to at the minute is a Parrot and Affy, and that's because you can buy the Affy for 449 from Amazon. And I probably will do one of them after Christmas, but it will be after Christmas. I've not, there's no time for doing that before. So this is the controller. Now, this is the bit that I possibly don't like. I don't like the gimbal. I'll be totally honest with you. They feel cheap. The controller itself doesn't feel bad. It's, it doesn't feel cheap and nasty like I thought it did. It, this is reminiscent of the controller you get for the... <laughs> Uh, e Sheen E58 and stuff like that but it's actually a lot better made than that but it does look it has that look about it it's got antennas on the top which are real because if you look closely you can see the cable running up the inside a nice addition to someone actually put genuine cables on so on the front you have if you can see that very well you've got return to home take off and land power button for the remote and then white on white, which is never the best thing to do, I'll probably read that, normal, sport. On the top you've got camera button, gimbal wheel, record. There are no buttons on the back and it is a rechargeable um, unit so you can recharge it. And then under here has got a data port for some kind of connection, in, I'm guessing in the future. This slides down. And your phone, this is an iPhone 7 Plus, with a case on, fits beautifully. There's no, it has a bit more room as well, you could get a bigger phone in than that. It's completely solid, there's nothing. So the controller, although I don't like the gimbals, the controller's actually a lot nicer than I thought it was. And what you have to remember, this is a budget drone. This isn't a thousand pound drone, it's a 369 pound retail, I paid 329 for it. So, it's not a very expensive drone. So, I'm going to turn it on and connect it up to the app and let you have a look. Drone first, controller second. So, power button in, you leave it, it go beep. 
quite horrible noise actually, a very high pitched shrill. Gimbal does its thing. Once that's done, turn your controller on. Hold the button until all the four lights light up. And then you'll get a status bar on the front telling you how much life you've got in your battery for the controller. It takes a few seconds actually for it to connect. There you go. So you can see the controller's half charged because I've got two lights, two lights. Once you've connected that up, you get your cable, you plug it in the side here. Then you plug this into your mobile device. And then you want, the app is the Hubson X app. I already had the app on my phone because it's for some of the other Hubson drones. But there you go. So it's Hubs X Hubson is the app. When you go into it, I'll skip that ad. The first thing it's going to pull is a Xeno. Enter device. And if you've never done any of this before and you want to go through the tutorial, how to pair devices is actually quite good. I've done already know how to do that, so I'm going to hit straight into main interface. It's going to take a few seconds to connect. There you go. So you're in. Right. Now there's a couple of strange things you need to do. If you go up to settings at the top. You go to where it says. Can you see that bind aircraft to current device? It says not bounded. You click on that. And you hit OK. Every time you need to do that. And then it's going to do a GPS accuracy test. Don't do that. Inside because you're not going to pick up any GPS signal. And the idea is to get them close together. And it's going to... Check both GPS coordinates against each other, and that's for the follow me mode and various other things. We don't want to do that, so we can skip it. And then the other thing you need to do is make sure your control is connected, hit your controls button, make sure it's set to Wi Fi, click the button that says transmitter to aircraft connection, hit the refresh button. Now, this can take a little bit of time to appear in here, or you sometimes have to go in and out of it. Now, I actually don't know whether it makes any difference whether you're in this or not because everything seems to work. It's just what I've seen on other videos. It will come up Hubson in there eventually, Zeno. But like I say, I don't think it makes any difference because I've already bound it to it. I think it might be a, a way for you using it a different way and you're just flying with the phone if that's going to happen. But when, I, when I've connected up straight away, it worked perfectly, but it's not one thing to want to do it now. But as long as you're bound, everything else seems to be, seems anyway, to be perfectly. These are the versions. If you look here, you've got your flight controller version, your firmware version, and your gimbal version. So the FPV version is actually your camera. They're what they need to be. And that's what they do when you've got, when you've done the update. It's important that you do the update first before you do anything else. So once you've done all your updates, you're going to have the different functions. So if you look here, that's your camera and video functions. So when you set it to video mode, and you click this button, you now have control of your video resolution, which you didn't have before. So you've now got 4K 2.7, 1080 and 720. And you've got a frame rate, 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second. Now it isn't going to do 60 frames a second in 4K, but it should do 6, I think it does 60 frames a second. It might not do 60 frames a second, it might just save 60 frames a second in 1080, so let's have a look. Go 1080. Yeah, you go 60 frames a second in 1080, so it's 30 frames a second in 2.7 and 4, 4K. Here you can adjust your white balance, kind of, automatic sunny, cloudy day. And this is your colour, so you can go black and white, bright, nostalgic. Now you couldn't do any of this with the app the way it was, not it? Because it didn't let you do it, there was none of this on here. You can turn grid lines on, if you want to line your shot up. I sometimes use them actually. You can adjust your exposure. And your ISO, if you set it to manual, you can adjust your ISO. All these di weren't available before. So we've done that. We've got it set to how we want it. We've got a gimbal control wheel here, just on the top. See that? And if you watch the screen, 
it's quite smooth actually, the gimbal feels nice and smooth. Feels really nice to be honest. So it's got motors locked because I haven't unlocked the motors down and out to unlock your motors. Turns your GPS signal at the top, so you've got 10 GPS. That is the strength of your signal back to and from here. And the 58, 55% sorry, is the Hubson Zeno's battery. Which I like, it's in the percentage not just block bars. Which I don't like. Here you can, we can actually do that because it bounces to this, but I think on some modes it might let you fly with the transmitter. Now you've got to remember this app isn't just for the Zeno, this app's for a lot of other hubs and products that you can fly with the phone. I don't quote me on this, it's brand new, I've just got it. I'll update that more in the next videos. Like I'll update this um, issue that I've got that it doesn't seem to show in here all the time. But I think, oh there you go, it's got it. Hubs and Zeno, connect. I don't think this makes any difference whatsoever because it, nothing's different. It says Wi-Fi established, but I had Wi-Fi anyway, as you could quite clearly see. So, the SD card doesn't come with it, so you have to supply your own SD card. I've got 32 gig in here, and what it does do is a speed test on the SD card, which is a rare thing, I've never seen it do that before. It will let you do that. They also, that when you plug it in the first time, it's going to want to make you do a compass calibration, which I've done, but you can go in here and carry out compass calibration and the compass calibration, I will show you how to do it the compass calibration is a standard and it shows you on the screen when to change obviously don't do this inside like I'm doing this is not a place to be calibrating your compass but I've done it inside, there you go, just to see it so now the compass is calibrated it's going to reinitialize the system. The gimbal protection was on because I had it upside down and I was moving the gimbal about, which is quite clever. So, if it gets into an accident or gets stuck or something, or this goes through something you don't like, it locks that gimbal to stop the gimbal getting damaged, which is a great feature. Obviously, in a crash, that's going to happen and various other things. The motor's killing a crash as well. There's quite a lot of things in this drone light. First impressions are, it's worth the money I paid for it. And I'm not saying that in a derogatory way at all. It, it is. It's just. It is really for what you pay. You're paying for what you you get. Really, you're paying a 369 pound for a 369 pound drone. It's not a Mavic. It's not a Mavic Air. You're buying what you buy. I've seen already seen videos comparing the two creatures. They're not the same. One's double the money. You, you're buying something at £369, so you need to remember that's what you've bought. I'm very pleased with it so far. I haven't flown it, obviously. The only other thing I need to show you is, let me just turn it off. I forget, I remember later on when I go and post this video that I haven't done this. So, this is the battery. So, it has a 3000 milliamp hour 11.4, so it's a high volt battery. Now, it is proprietary, obviously and it's good for 20 something minute flight time but I think real world is about 18 minutes but the great thing about these, these are £40, £39.99 for a battery fantastic if you're lucky and you live in America apparently it's $30 I've heard that, <laughs> whether that's true or not I don't know but I've seen it on some websites in the States at that money so fantastic value on the battery and the battery slots underneath now the battery actually forms the bottom of the craft when you plug it in which I've never seen before. Look, it doesn't bother me in the slightest, but it's just a strange thing that I've not seen. LED front and rear, which you've probably seen. And yeah, all it leaves for me to say is, um, I think it looks great for the money. I'm, I'm happier with it now I've got it in my hands than I was when I, I was a bit apprehensive thinking it's going to look a bit cheap, it's going to be a bit tacky. It doesn't. The software update was an absolute breeze. If you go on to... Um, Hubson.com, you can download the latest firmware, but if you go to YouTube and you type in Hubson Zeno firmware grade, Hubson have done some videos, some uh, videos for setting this up, one of them for doing the update, follow it as it says, can't go wrong, it takes you 10 minutes to do everything, really is that simple and that's simply by connecting this thing to a PC, connecting this to a PC, 
it'll do the updates and the last thing you need to do is your camera it'll tell you how to do that copy the contents onto the card put the card in turn it on it updates so thanks ever so much for watching don't know when i'm going to get a flight video up i'll get one up as soon as i can once again have a great day